Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. We are here at Adobe Max 2023, live from the Adobe Live community booth. My name is Voodoo Val, I'm an illustrator here in the community, and I am joined by the one and only Sydney Mashuda. <laughs> How are you, Sydney? Great. How are you, Val? I'm super excited for today. I'm very excited about what you're going to be working yeah. on. We are here doing first takes for graphic design, which is going to be pretty exciting. I know that you've got some magic us. But before we dive into everything, um, I'd love to remind everybody because I can see we've got so many friends and uh, buddies in the chat over on the live chat. If you guys have not already, definitely give a subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel and also follow us at Adobe Live on Instagram because we've got some pretty cool updates and things going on over there on Instagram. You can keep up to date on all the stuff we're working on. But without further ado, why don't you Tell us a little bit about you, Sydney. Yeah. Show us a little bit about you, what you work on, and then give us the rundown of today's project. Yeah. So I am a graphic designer. Um, I kind of run my own freelance biz slash agency studio thing called Super Creative. Um, we specialize mostly in branding, graphic design, illustration, websites, and then just all the other fun stuff that designers get our hands into. Mm -hmm. um, I love working with really passionate people like myself, uh, smaller businesses, and just any way to bring like really cool art approaches to mm. uh, to the work that we do. Um, yeah, and today I'm going to be working on a faux pasta brand, well, like kind of incorporating some of the the new features that Illustrator mm -hmm. has. Can't go wrong with pasta. Yep. Can't go wrong with pasta. So yeah. very excited. We've got Cody Bear in the chat holding down the fort, uh, saying hello to us. We've got Robert and Reaper Mike. It's good to see all of you folks. Steve, good to see you. Oliver, Vandal, welcome in everyone on the YouTube side of things. It's good to see you. Um, I think that uh, we've got actually some serious uh, OG viewers in the chat <laughs> as well. People like Steve, people like Reverb. Um, and I also see some new folks like Akin coming through. It's good to see all of you folks. Um, I see my friend Jumana, my friend Hannah in there. <laughs> Hi, Hannah. Hi, Jumana. <laughs> Good to see you. We've got some Val and Sydney uh, hand wave emojis in the <laughs> chat. So I would, love, I would love to see emojis in the chat, actually. If we can get a little chat wave going on, that would be amazing. Uh, I think that's one of my, my goals whenever yeah. we do live stuff is to see if we can start a chat wave. Yeah. Anytime <laughs> we can start a chat wave, that is a, a success. Wade uh, Acuff in the chat as well. It's good to see you, Wade. I'm really excited to be here at Adobe Max. Uh, you were talking about some of the features and things that we might uh, jump into. I know that we're doing the um, kind of uh, pasta sort of rebrand um, thing, and maybe we can talk a little bit about your thought process before we jump into our um, designing here. Um, because when you go into this and you start like laying out all the groundwork and stuff, um, what kind of stuff do you think about um, as you kind of move into that process? Yeah, so um, this one's a little bit different because it's not a real client. It's just kind of a, a passion project that I get to use to present to you guys here. Mm -hmm. um, but for a real client, I'll usually start by sending them a, like a pretty extensive brand questionnaire for them to fill out so mm -hmm. I get as many answers directly from them as possible. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then it allows me to take like what they already kind of have cooking in their mind and then mix it with our expert opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah, then we just kind of, uh, we create mood boards. Mm -hmm. um, we try to mix up what um, what's possible for who they are, who their audience is, mm -hmm. um, what's appropriate for the industry, but still doing things like allow them to step out. Yeah. Your, your work and your studio um, really says, like when I go and I look at all of like your past work and the portfolio and everything, I feel like there's always like just something that during that communication process, you really kind of show that. We can take a look now um, yeah. and kind of browse through and see some of that unique, unique spark. Yeah. Um, all right. So just going through my website here, that yeah, cool? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see. So I launched my new brand, new design, new website, like right before my last Adobe Live. So that mm -hmm. was a bit of a push, but she's all ready now. Um, so yeah, like I said, brand identities, illustration, print and packaging, web design, brand strategy, messaging, social media, friendly attitudes. Um, lots of uh, different projects here. Um, currently in the process of reworking my services page mm -hmm. because as creatives, we always need to have things in, mm -hmm. as a work in process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's see. This is one of the projects that I did on my very first Adobe Live up here. Loved, by the way. Pottery with a purpose. Yeah. 
Yeah, such a fun brand to work on. And that's kind of what I really like to do with a lot of my projects is just, even though um, there'll be different companies, different demographics, um, different uh, industries and everything, I just love making things fun and playful. Absolutely. Because playful doesn't need to mean juvenile or mm -hmm. like young. Mm -hmm. Playful, like you can have a playful adult brand or like a playful pasta brand or a mm -hmm. cereal brand or like makeup and things like that. And even though it can be still like refined and elegant and sophisticated, there, you can still add playful elements, whether it's in the copy, mm -hmm. the illustrations, and just so many different things. And I think that that's one of the biggest connective threads in my work is just that fun, playful attitude. Absolutely, and it definitely shows, I definitely feel that playful, but you know, a lot of these have that playful element while also still being like very chic and very clean, very crisp, very professional, um, mm -hmm. and I think you do a great job kind of bringing that out um, for all of these yeah. different unique products. Like a walking table? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> we kind of got that going on today. Yeah, We're walking exactly. around doing our little stand. We're standing up. You know, our little jam here at yeah. Adobe Max. Um, Anthony Jackson in the chat saying, uh, awesome work. Uh, Wade saying, friendly attitudes, you are hired. Yes, absolutely. Playful <laughs> attitude, you're double hired. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Oliver saying Behance is back now. Yes, indeed. Maybe, you know, let let your friends know in the chat if they can't see us, just to give us a little bit of a refresh, um, and they should be able to see our smiling faces. Um, but, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what you jump in for today because I know we're going to be doing that pasta brand, um, and this is kind of a great um, opportunity for everybody to kind of, like, see inside the mind of Sydney um, here because I aspire to brand as powerfully as <laughs> these images we get to see today. So I I'm, I'm excited to see your process. Yeah. All right, shall I dive in? Yeah, go All for right, it. All right, cool. Um, so recently, my husband and I went on like basically like a two-week trip to Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, while I was there, I kind of had to think up what I was going to do for this Adobe Live. Mm -hmm. And I really had noodles on the brain. Mm -hmm. um, so it had to be something pasta or Italy related mm -hmm. um, and I settled on designing a brand for like a packaged pasta company um, and after doing like since it's again a, uh, a company that I'm just kind of making up mm -hmm. um, I went through like a few different name pasta or a name a few different name possibilities mm -hmm. I almost said possibilities honestly and why, not yeah. even trying to do that are happening yes. right now okay. possibilities possibilities coming true yeah. today <laughs> um, <laughs> So experimenting with different names, different typefaces, um, but then of course I had to look up like pasta puns and things. Mm -hmm. So I found the term, the like the pun impasta, which is perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. So then that kind of lent itself to the rest of this brand, where mm -hmm. um, um, it's called impasta, and it's really really tasty noodles, but it's made from like healthy superfoods. Mm -hmm. um, so like beans, lentils, but it like actually tastes good and it doesn't taste like sand. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, so I chose a, um, like, more of a sophisticated editorial serif typeface here. Mm -hmm. So it, ha it has, again, like I was saying earlier, that, like, little bit of sophistication to it. Yeah. Um, but then it's got that goofy spaghetti M. Which is perfect because it does, like, you're right, it does have that sophistication, but it yeah. kind of gives you, like, a little little squiggle. Yeah, you a know, little taste. A little, little fun there. Yeah. Loving it. And it's kind of like the noodle is pretending to be a letter, so mm -hmm. it's like impersonating pasta. Mm -hmm. So it's an impasta. It's an impasta pasta. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, exactly. We've um, also got some folks participating in the chat um, talking about noodles on the noodle. Yeah, um, there you go. of noodles on the noodle. <laughs> I love it. Um, and I'm loving it. Keep them coming, yeah. folks. Keep the pasta puns As many as possible. Chat. Yeah, <laughs> I'll put them on a t-shirt. Yes. Um, but yeah, so then from there, I created this little uh, brand icon. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this would like, if this was a real brand, how well this would work in, but I just had to include him here because he's so cool. He's adorable. Yeah, yeah. it's like, again, a noodle pretending to be a person. Mm -hmm. So he's like wearing a mask, he's an imposter. Absolutely. Um, so then with every single brand that I do, um, well, not every single one, but mm -hmm. most, I love to just include an excessive amount of fun brand illustrations. Mm -hmm. So I did all of these, and I'll put a quick background behind here so we can see it better. Oh, um, I love them. But yeah, I've been super into doing illustrations with this like light halftone in there. Mm -hmm. um, it just adds so much personality without having to like 
work too Dude, hard yeah, for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it gives it like that subtle edge of like there's a lot of really good texture and yeah. um, detail going on here, but it still has that fun feel and vibe, exactly. which I love. Yeah. So um, incorporated a bunch of those. Um, and I am definitely not a copywriter, but since I've been doing more brand strategy and more copywriting and working with copywriters, mm -hmm. I'm kind of slowly working on those skills. So I was able right. to like write some of my own copy, authentically tasty, deceivingly healthy. Which sounds great. Yes. Loving it. Got to have the pairing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of where I ended up last night. Um, definitely was working on this last night in the mm -hmm. hotel room, getting things polished. I think that's how we all are yeah. at, at Adobe Max. We are right. all diving into the project files just the evening before. So, right. you know. Yeah. So then, um, like, usually if you've seen my past Adobe Lives, mm -hmm. um, I like to kind of create a board like this one in the top right where I can see kind of some of the core assets together, mm -hmm. what some of the um, main brand colors look like as backgrounds, mm -hmm. as um, headline colors. Um, and then usually I'll test out what the um, what the logo looks like on top of an image just to make sure that it works pretty well. Absolutely. Um, and then after I establish some of those core assets like the color palette, the type system, which I'll, I'll probably dive into that in a second, um, then I like to just kind of expand on that and use all those assets in use. So with a, whether it's social media stories, um, merch, which I'll dive into in a little bit, um, obviously, if this is doing some some nice mock-ups, yes, yeah, loving this it. Is a, um, it'll be a like uh, like an e like a yeah a physical company where they yeah. have like produce real products. If they if they dive yes. into, it. I think this is like such an attractive way to present that design as well because mm -hmm. it 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 still has that fun, but it also doesn't distract either, right. which is perfect. So it has that like sophistication while still right. having that playfulness, loving it. Especially like if you imagine yourself at a grocery store or like even if it's a fancy grocery store, which I would imagine this might be sold at, mm -hmm. like in any kind of store setting, there is there are so many options, so many different things on the shelves. So to me, I'm always, even though I love things that are playful and cool and cute, mm -hmm. I'm always drawn to the more, like slightly more minimal packaging that has less texture and less stuff. Absolutely. Because it's just, it's like a break for our eyes. Mm -hmm. And it makes me appreciate that restraint a little bit more rather than putting stuff all over the place all, all the time. I agree 100%. And I also think that it really showcases the effort and like the cleverness that you have come up with here yeah. and features that like front and center. Um, yeah. We do have people saying uh, we can get, we can all get a little um, fusilli from time, <laughs> time to, to time. time. I assume that's a that's kind of pasta. Yes. I think that okay. Yeah. It's a, it's I hope I said that right. Fusilli. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fusilli. Yeah. So loving it. Keep those pasta puns coming Oops. in, folks. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, kind of where I left off last night. I knew I kind of wanted this yellow in here, mm -hmm. but I, like, being super honest about it, I was not loving the rest of the colors. Okay. So I wanted to just um, since we are. Um, at Adobe Max here, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to test out the recolor tool, which I've used a few times. Absolutely. Um, get this guy over here. Nope, nope. He'll stay over there. <laughs> um, all right. So I could definitely just like adjust these as like within the color wheel here. Mm -hmm. But um, since there are these nifty AI features, I can just pop in here and kind of just see. These are some sample prompts. Um, and just kind of yeah. let it let it do its thing and and um, use the sample prompts just to experiment a little bit before right. you get you know to yeah. using your own ooh yeah like that's great that black might be a little bit heavy but I actually really like how monochromatic these three colors are mm -hmm. and they still feel like authentic pasta e colors absolutely and that's what I was thinking is like it has that kind of earthiness yeah where you would see that in a pasta bag honestly. Yeah. And then you can just easily reset back to the original color palette. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Let's just see what happens if I type in pasta. Yeah. Let's see if we get some of those. Um, I'm, I imagine like greens and you know like tans and yeah. things like that. Ooh, that's. Like, I actually love that. That's very calming. Yes, it very is. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's a little wacky. We <laughs> we have people in the chat who are like, um, like the great. Pasta Wars, if mac and cheese don't float your boat, might as well go home. <laughs> Reverb Mike is putting his foot down in the chat. Yeah. Um, Joey Maloney is also saying yes, yes to the pasta. 
um, talking about pasta mustaches. So you are definitely empowering the chat yes, to come forward cool. with their pasta loves this afternoon for sure. I mean, honestly, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to go to Italy is mm-hmm. to eat as much pasta as possible. Of course, yes. Um, Pastable. Should I ask everyone what, if they prefer this palette or yeah. this palette? Yeah, let's do, let's say we yeah. can call this the warm palette and or, the cool palette. Like, so, because it's kind of, yeah. unless you've got another. Well, I was just going to say, like, this one can be palette A. Mm hmm. That's, that's a much better. And yeah. then this one can be palette B. Okay. So, yeah. Let us know which one you like the most. Yeah, let us know in the chat if you like palette A or palette B best. And then kind of as we wait for a little bit of feedback from our friends in the chat, uh, maybe we can talk about um, how you move forward after you kind of choose your colors. Because something I thought of when we got that one that had like the the black square is Mm -hmm. like, would you be changing a lot of these illustration elements, like inverting the colors to look different on other colors and experimenting with the recolor in that effect? or do you tend to keep them all like pretty uniform as far as all of the illustrations stay the same color and only changing backgrounds like um whoops um let's see is there a way to grab some of the past options here maybe if we scroll scroll down um That's similar I'll, i think but i think the the top here is different oh did it go a, yeah it just changed a little bit there we go that's the same palette love it um um okay, what are we saying here they're loving b yeah we're getting, we're getting a lot of a i think a and b b maybe more b's lots of votes for uh for palette b coming in on the youtube chat so yeah let's go ahead and do palette cool. b then awesome well, there we go. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, loving it. Um, so basically to your question, and um, I love the recolor tool, but at the same time, like I, for me, I've always found color a very, very easy thing to just like latch onto and mm-hmm. create color palettes. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I think I'm just a colorful gal. <laughs> Honestly, that is an incredible superpower yeah. to have. Me, I'm the kind of person where like I need to jump in there and use that recolor and it really helps me for my process. But for you, I maybe, you know, like experimentation as you move through and it's like a quick visit, yeah. you know, in there. So generally, um, what I like to do with these, um, with like these brand boards that I'll send to a client as like mm-hmm. the first, the first time that they get to see uh, the like the, the brand identity. Yeah, yeah. I'll usually include a page pretty similar to this, mm-hmm. where it, it just shows all the core brand colors. Yeah. Whoops. Um, just so that like you can see it in action, but you can also see it by itself, just to have an extra layer of context. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. I feel like it also it it's one of those pages that really puts the client into the mood as far as they feel like they're being immersed in what you have created for them. Exactly. You know, um, and I love it. I yeah. also love creative designs for this particular like color palette page, which is really great. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Would maybe... Hmm. We could do oh, like... This. Oh, that's nice. Sometimes when I'm not sure like what to do for an extra color, I'll just mm-hmm. like click all over the board and see what mm-hmm. happens. Like, you oops. really have like, like that one was just nice. like you said, gone through and like snagged like a great color palette. Yeah. Like like that looks so good. But it's weird <laughs> though, because like honestly, if I saw just this color palette, mm-hmm. I don't think I would ever be attracted to it. Or I don't think I would ever really be drawn mm-hmm. to it. But seeing it in context like this yeah. makes me like it a lot more. Looks delicious. Yeah. We have a um, question from the chat um, talk, asking what fonts you're using and how to add halftones to your work. Oh, yeah. So um, the fonts that I'm using, and honestly, that was one of my to-dos for this, mm-hmm. um, is to create the type system. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here if I can find the fonts. All right. So what I also like to do for clients is create this type system page. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to create this relatively quickly. Um, Because again, it's just another layer for them to see. I think I did that twice. It's another layer for them to see um, just 
like all the what different their possibilities. Yeah. yeah, what the assets look like all together. I think that's you know a great point because somebody who has very little like design know-how might not even notice all of those finer points of like the design package. And so just kind of putting it in front of them and letting them see all the different things that they have available to them is really great. Yeah. And in this it allows them to kind of see what the um, what the hierarchy should be for, for the yes. type. Like, yeah. That's one thing that might, like certain clients struggle with quite a bit. It's like mm -hmm. they make all the type the same size and you can't read it on like, yeah. anything. And your client is probably going to take all this stuff and they're going to go do their other own things with it after you're gone exactly. uh, in a lot of cases. So it gives them like a guide to work with going forward. Right. Um, so it all kind of looks cohesive and what you intended. Exactly. So then this one here is HK Grotesque, which is just mm -hmm. always one of my favorite body copy and like smaller detail fonts. Oh, it's, 100%. It's so clean and legible, but it's so goofy and fun mm -hmm. and cheerful looking. Uh, this would be a great time to do a little screenshot, folks, because we've got all of our fonts laid out here, yeah. unless there's another one after this. I think it's um, no, just the three. I think it was just those three. Yeah, Sometimes I like to include um, HK Grotesque. Regular is a like in a different yeah. action font. Nice, nice, nice. And track yeah. that puppy out a little bit. Um, and then usually I'll kind of label these as well. Mm -hmm. um, where is the align? I can't have those not aligned. That'll yes. drive me nuts. <laughs> yeah, these are all really excellent choices. Um, and I think that, you know, to me, they have like a very particular voice altogether, but I think that you ha do a really great job in your portfolio and with these projects of like giving kind of a new vibe to such uh, prestigious looking fonts as well. Because mm -hmm. now, before I would have thought that this was going to be like a particular vibe, you know, like a very stern vibe, but now it looks fun to me because I've seen what you've done with, um, with this particular brand with it. So I just exactly. really love it. And then I, for some reason, I always like adding like just a tiny little thing below mm -hmm. uh, smaller headlines like this. Yes. So I'm going to add this little kava toppy mm -hmm. underneath here as just a tiny little design accent. I love it. Make him yellow. I don't know why the pasta are boys, but they are. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think they are. Yeah. yeah. That's what they feel um, like in my heart. Yeah. So I feel it. So really, when I deliver things to clients, they always get this type page. They always get a color palette page. Mm -hmm. This kind of main brand assets page as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I have, when I offer my branding services to clients, I offer three different packages and three different sizes. Yeah. So if someone has a smaller budget, they can get just only the core assets where you're kind of going to get only those main pages I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But if you want to really go all out and get a very, very comprehensive identity you can you'll get those core pages but then you'll get the illustrations and patterns and just mm -hmm. so many other pieces as well yeah um all right let's see did this change color so this is another thing that i literally just tried out last night but i it was super easy to use mm -hmm. um so this is the oh i think uh, i know what's coming mock up mm -hmm. uh, capability in illustrator that i when it was first announced i was like there's no way I'm going to use that because, mm -hmm. like, it's Photoshop. There's mm -hmm. Photoshop, you know, but mm -hmm. when I used it last night, I fully understood why it makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. um, so what you can do, um, so I created this label. I'm going to group that, select the image in the background because I want to I want to make that label mm -hmm. kind of uh, mesh or warp onto the label in the background. So yeah, select absolutely. both. Go to Object mock-up beta, make, and then it's just going to sit here for a second, mm -hmm. kind of gathering what's in, the, like, what's in the image, what's within the label itself, kind of finding out where those edges are mm -hmm. so it can uh, kind of mesh onto there. It's, gonna, the, the, it's worth the wait, though, so yes. you can see all of this wonderfulness. So then the next step, though, what you got to do, hang on. If you click into here, you have to go to normal and then multiply. Yeah, use a little. Oh, so good. There's some funky so, edges, so but, but that's that can always that be touched up later. I think you know with these with these features and stuff, um, kind of 
tweaking little fine details around the edges and things is 100% understandable, depending on what you're doing with it, because every project's different. Um, but the fact that you can do it so easily is mm -hmm. just amazing. Let's see here. Um, we've got Do we Kristen. have any water available? I'm, I'm about to start coughing. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Coke. I had a soda. Got a party going on here <laughs> yeah. at Adobe Max. Um, we've got Kristen in the chat saying, this looks so good. Absolutely obsessed with Sydney's work. Um, we're in the same boat, Kristen, honestly. We absolutely are in the same boat. <coughs> um, we've got comments from chat. Um, I'm watching this working on a pasta event for a client, they say, which nice. is perfect. So maybe take a little bit of inspiration. Um, maybe work uh, with the same process that Sydney is working on as she moves through um, this kind of branding identity. Um, get a little inspiration here yeah. um, <laughs> we've got more people jumping in and talking about their favorite pasta keep it coming heck yeah let's throw that kava toppy noodle and give him his own package mm -hmm. um, it looks like some folks are talking about um, getting access to any new features yes you may have to for anybody at home who's trying to update their apps um, and things like that. You may need to go in and do it manually, um, maybe restart your desktop client and take a look at the updates page specifically, mm -hmm. um, just to, uh, to make sure that all of those, uh, those apps are updated. Um, yeah, last night I just went into uh, Creative Cloud, typed mm -hmm. in Illustrator beta, or mm -hmm. like went through the, like the longer list of um, Somewhere in here, there's yeah the beta app. Mm -hmm. If you go in there, you can download the different betas. Yeah, and then this feature is just already available in that beta. Amazing. Yeah, definitely a great place to explore and um, kind of uh, kind of dive into. Um, opens up a whole new world of all the different stuff that you can really do um, and take a look at. So highly recommend. Yeah. Um, loving this second um, design that you're doing. You're really creating not only like a great looking. Um, project here, but also like a series, yeah. which I'm loving. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, since I'm such a visual person, like I'm sure a lot of these our uh, viewers are, mm -hmm. I can I mostly tell the difference between things just by color. Yeah. Like if you tell me, go buy that kind of mm -hmm. shampoo or whatever, I'm not going to know what that, it's I need to know one. the color of the yeah, packaging first. Exactly. <laughs> I need to see it so I know what it is. It'll get lost on the shelf to me. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Mm -hmm. Again, which is why we like nice, simple, clean packaging. Yes. So we have that breathing room. OK, that one turned out a little bit better with the color. I um, love it. But yeah, and then this you, is, again, this is, it's another thing that's like understandable to like kind of go in and, and experiment too, because um, the, the <laughs> <laughs> that looks so good. It keeps like distracting me from my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as that blending mode goes in there, it just I looks know. so good. But yeah, tweak you know, tweak it a little bit and, and experiment as you kind of jump into your own projects because this is like a, an incredibly powerful feature now available um, that I think is going to change up my whole workflow. Really. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I always um, and one of my former employers mm -hmm. would always say this that. You gotta when you whenever you create a new brand, you gotta do the T-shirt test. Oh yeah. To see if the logo mm -hmm. and the brand looks good on a T-shirt in any sense, um, and I think the logo would look pretty nice on a T-shirt. It would just yes. be it just again, it has that level of sophistication, mm -hmm. but Absolutely. it's like silly at the same time. But we don't always want to just wear a T-shirt with a logo on it. So I always like to try to just incorporate some kind of fun. Mm -hmm. phrases or taglines on there so and I I wrote some of these dorky lines last night oh my gosh I love it I like the upsetty without spaghetti upsetty without spaghetti is a shirt that I would love to own <laughs> I, know. I need it for myself uh, reverb mic coming through with more <laughs> with more puns um, we also need to know um, what Sydney's favorite <coughs> pasta shape is. I agree. We're going to mm -hmm. need to know about your favorite pasta, favorite yes. pasta shape. Um, I mean, it it really depends on the use for it. Um, yeah. yeah. I love mac and cheese so much. So mm -hmm. if it's for mac and cheese, I'd say cavatappi for mm -hmm. sure. I love a ravioli or a tortellini because you're putting cheese directly into the pasta. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a cavatappi for me, honestly, because yeah. I like I've had I've had steak mac and cheese with cavatappi, which for me is awesome. Oh yeah, I'm a steak gal, 
So I think that sold me on Cavatappi oh, yeah. for a long time. This is great. That's perfect. That's so perfect. Oh my God. Upsetty without spaghetti. Story okay. of my life. <laughs> I, I would actually really love to produce this shirt. You should. I would buy it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be the first person in your DMs. Like, where where's the, where's the link? Yeah. Where's Give the it. spaghetti? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cavatappi is amazing, says Cody. A lot of people um, throwing up props for a lasagna. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, Cody's saying, I'm upsetty without spaghetti. Other yes. people pointing can confirm. Yes, yes. indeed. Uh, Mock-up feature is awesome. So much time saving and t-shirt test. Love it. This from Samuel Jones Price. Thank you so much, Samuel. Um, yeah, I think that this is really going to improve um, and kind of expedite a lot of processes um, for a lot of people because really what you've been able to do utilizing these features is spend more time on like the vibe and the look and feel and stuff of this brand without having to spend the time to I don't know create your own mock-ups from scratch and 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 do all these different things that um, I end up like kind of dreading during the process because yeah. I just want to focus on what stuff is looking like right um, so I love it would buy that t-shirt for sure from Joey Maloney. Um, I think we are recruiting people who are waiting for the spaghetti shirt. I think that's yes. what's happening in the chat. I think they're making it happening. Yes. Yeah, we'll start like some sort of merch campaign. Use your noodle. Indeed. Just like for no other reason than fans of pasta. You yeah, know? Like, exactly. Just <laughs> like, there's, there, and there really doesn't have to be any more reason than that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, but then I remember you mentioned earlier, someone asked how I did the halftone. Yes, yeah. Um, so what I did with all these, I drew these on my iPad first mm -hmm. because I I would be lost without my iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. um, I so, also illustrate on it. It's a great process. Hell yeah. Um, so I will, um, I will sketch that first. Mm -hmm. Then I go over it with a, um, like a thicker brush like this mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. this is from true grit supply maybe yes. he's got some great or he they whatever if it's a company or a person mm -hmm. um, has some great uh, brushes available and um, then once I have the like those thicker lines in there mm -hmm. then I think that comp that organization also has uh, like a half tone brush too so then I'll take like the fine grain and then just go through like just the second layer of where that shadow would be. So like, yeah. you think of the darker, sh the darkest shadow, and then like the second darkest shadow, mm -hmm. and just kind of keep that curve going. Kind of build it up in different levels. Um, I bet that that is a very like almost kind of meditative process too. Once you get into that portion of the project, I yeah. know it would be for me for sure. Yeah. Um, that's they, why. I, <laughs> we've that's got why some I sayings use... for you, by the way. Oh no. <laughs> feeling feeling saucy and ready spaghetti. Oh, in heck the chat. Yes. Sorry to cut you off there. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's <laughs> perfect. Um, let's see. Some of these are vectorized. Some of these aren't. Again, you can kind of tell I was thinking on the fly last night when I was mm -hmm. creating these. But mm -hmm. um, let's see. And I did find, um, so usually I'll just kind of like, it really, really depends on the style of illustration if I'm going to, be, going to use live trace or if mm -hmm. I'm going to vectorize anything. Um, this style, I might have actually just kept it as um, raster artwork uh -huh. because you're able to maintain that level of just hand-drawn crispiness to it. Right. Um, but for this, I decided to vectorize. Um, works pretty well. You can't really look too closely at some of those um but I think some of it's, a great, it's a great example of like the possibilities of what could be like, you know, anybody who's doing the a project like this. Possibilities? Yeah, the, the possibilities, folks. Anything is possible. Okay. <laughs> yes. Anything possible. Um, we also have a chat uh, question coming in uh, talking about do you make mock-ups um, and if not, where to get them. And I think we've kind of highlighted the great capabilities, the possibilities within um, uh, Illustrator today mm -hmm. on, you know, kind of creating your own mock-ups the way that Sydney did. Um, but uh, I think that we could get a little bit uh, going in the chat if anyone has some cool resources they want yeah. to share as well. Because this is also a great space to come and make creative friends and figure out where other folks are getting their, um, their resources and things. So let us know. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, at least for me, what I, so this image was from Adobe Stock. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just typed in pasta mock-up, and granted this is just a JPEG, mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I mean, it worked just fine when mm -hmm. you pop it into Illustrator. Yeah. Um, so Adobe Stock is a good, great resource. Um, Yellow Images is another really great one where it's just uh, really simple, clean, Mm -hmm. mock-ups that are uncomplicated, no fuss. Yeah. Um, so you can just download them. They're very easy. Um, you need some underwear mock-ups, you know. Yeah, because that's, I'm always looking yeah. for brief mock-ups. Exactly. I have actually, I actually had to purchase a mock-up of underwear and mm -hmm. a thong once. Really? For, for a client. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Sometimes I didn't, you find yourself yeah. in strange places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I was like, hey, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Why it's not? a first, and why not yeah, have that in exactly. the portfolio? You know. Um, All right. Well, I like that tote. I would also carry that tote around. Absolutely. Use like, your noodle is great. Yeah. Bring it to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Get all your noodles. Pasta shop. There's a little empty space down there, but we'll we'll move past. Uh, uh, let's see, let's see here. Christy Hepworth talking about if I need a mock up. Uh, I use Adobe Stock and use the free section uh, where you can find really great things. And I think that, yeah, that's actually a really great point because um, where a lot of, um, you know, projects, you can find like the right mock-up for you from one of these great resources that you shared. But mm. in this case, if you can find what you need on Adobe Stock and, and you can take an image that's perfect and just kind of like Insta mock it up right there immediately um, and it kind of... Uh, I don't have to go through the stress and like rigmarole of like trying to find the perfect mock-up for that specific like super niche thing I'm trying right. to showcase, right? Yeah. Um, and it, it, it just takes away a lot of that stress and I end up with really fabulous images. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Pixels or Graphic Burger uh, in oh, the yeah. chat. A lot of people sharing a lot of great resources. Thank you, thank you. Um, honestly feel so much more inspired now to create my own mock-ups because of the new mock-up beta feature in Illustrator. Well, thank you, Kristen. I'm glad you've been here with us to Heck be yeah. inspired. Absolutely. Um, oh, this is a great question. Sam J. Price says, what are your thoughts on using QR codes in branding guidelines? Um, considering now a lot of content is online and most businesses are using QR codes in marketing material. Do you ever include QR codes in like a brand guideline? Um, I think I have once, and it was mm -hmm. a it was a specific request from the client. Mm -hmm. um, and what once they requested it, I realized that's a perfect thing to include in a set of brand guidelines because so many people can just go online and just generate anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they can add the, the like that crappy text that like curves around the top that says scan yes. to scan the link or whatever. And as designers, we can just make those QR codes look so much nicer. Yes. Even if you just put like a very soft white box behind it, that just makes all the difference. Absolutely, and absolutely. Yeah, some clients just need that little extra level of detail. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a carbonara recipe is, so I was gonna make like a social media graphic. So, well we could throw some, some, some yeah, placeholder stuff text. in there. Yeah, placeholder text. Uh, we could just put some of uh, chat's sassy sayings in there yeah. too, if we want. Like the, um, what was it? Uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to put them into the chat for us again, Robert, because yeah. there were a few there. Um, Sixteen that I were ounces great. of sassy sauce. Sassy sauce, yes, indeed. Um, uh, minced words. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Um, two tablespoons minced words. There we go. Let us know what else we're putting in it, folks. Uh, Kristen also saying. Um, what is your favorite part of the entire branding process, excluding receiving the final seal of approval? Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. Good point. Oh, my God. Yeah, getting no edits is like just mm -hmm. make warms up my little heart. Don't you just feel like a good bean? Yes. Like, I'm, I'm good so at my I job. I did it. Yeah. Yeah, I did my mm. job well. Um, I would say probably creating just all the rest of these assets. Mm -hmm. um, so... I love creating the main brand. I love that like aha moment when you like think of the main brand idea is so yes. fun and you're just like, again, you feel like a happy little bean that you thought of that idea. Yeah, like I made this. Yeah. I made this. Yeah, or a yeah. happy little noodle. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah. I feel like everything's possible. Yes. Um, so I love that feeling. 
Um, I love creating all these illustrations. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, I usually go way overboard when it, it comes to creating those because mm -hmm. it's just so fun. Um, and then I really like just creating all of the rest of the brand elements. Mm -hmm. Usually I'll kind of call those the brand expansion phase. Okay. Um, so if I could pull up just an example of one of my past clients, um, let's see. Yeah, so like usually I'll have them approve a logo first. And then once the logo is approved, mm -hmm. just with like a couple extra little bits so they can see Love what it, it looks like. Yeah. Then I will move into the brand expansion phase. Mm -hmm. um, hang on. So they can see those main assets that they've already approved, mm -hmm. but then everything else. Yeah. Uh, so that like that way I'm not wasting time creating dozens of mock-ups that are just going to be thrown away because mm -hmm. they didn't like the initial direction. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's really, really great because it saves your time, it saves the client's time, and then most of the work that you're doing is focused on the best possible, you know, yeah. outcome for that, which exactly. is, is great. So yeah, that's, this is one of my other favorite parts is just creating all the rest of these extra mm -hmm. bits because it ha honestly helps me feel good about what I've created and realize like, okay, this was the right choice, this mm -hmm. was the right color, maybe I'll go back and darken this color a little bit mm -hmm. or um, include a new accent font or something. We've also got something to add for to our um, our recipe from the chat. Someone saying add a pinch of eureka moments, oh, which there I you think go. yeah, pinch of eureka. Now the real test will be is if I can spell eureka. I think it. Oh, it just went up. You guys are gonna have to put eureka in the chat. Yeah, someone spell it. <laughs> someone spell. This is uh, uh, happens to me every stream, by the way. Yeah. Where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try to spell this, and if I get it wrong, right? And I know that I can spell it, but it's mm -hmm. because I'm like. On we're live. Camera. Yeah, yeah, we're live. I'm not going to, well, no one's helping, so. Yep. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Kristen Let's saying, see. oh, my God, those colors are legendary. I agree 100%. We've got Kyle um, T. Webster in the chat. It is good to see you, Kyle. Welcome there in. There we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> CJ coming through with the double-spaced caps. There we go. I. That's what I was going to go for, but, you know. It's always good to double check. Things like this live on, and then people realize you can't spell, and it's just, you don't need that. Mm -hmm. We've got some folks wondering, um, does the chat ever uh, change their mind about color palette halfway through? Um, and when the logo comes first and if it's approved, other elements come later, am I right? Like kind of asking about that process. Like the, we can, maybe we can do the, the first question first. If like, yeah. do, do, do they change their mind about color palettes in the middle? Um, no, so generally what I do, um, and then who's gonna be a good example of this? Mm -hmm. Because I'm always changing my process a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I recently changed up my discovery process. I used mm -hmm. to have these really long mood boards where there was a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just always, like, I always had to do more explaining than was necessary because that meant it wasn't as intuitive as it should be. Yep. Um, so this is for an interior designer. Oh, I love this. Um, so oh. I did the description up here, like the main concept. Yeah. Um, the typography, like then breaking down some of the core elements. Mm -hmm. And these can change depending on the project, but mm -hmm. then I'll include one page here. And Which I got great. just like the idea and concept for this kind of layout mm -hmm. from one of my fellow freelance designers, Cagney. Mm -hmm. um, She's one of the freelancers that helps me out with my workload on a daily basis, which is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just giving more of a reduced amount of images and then having these like little samples of the color palette scattered around here. Yeah. Um, so with this one, the client liked this direction, but she was a little bit scared of that red. Mm -hmm. So we decided to nix that red mm -hmm. and then include a color from up here, which I'm a pretty flexible person. I'm happy to work with what the client wants. Mm -hmm. um, you don't always have to be super duper strict on things. Mm -hmm. um, so I was happy to work with the color palette like that with her. Um, so she's on a, we're in the middle of the design process for mm -hmm. this one, so I don't have any logos to show yet, but mm -hmm. if we've referenced this other project that I just showed, let's see. Um, yeah, so I will, this is like one of the later phases of the process, mm -hmm. but as you can see, I'm presenting like a primary logo, mm -hmm. a monogram, and then like the a secondary version of the logo. Yeah. Basically things that come very easily from this core primary logo. Mm -hmm. um, and within this, they get um, like a taste of what the color palette is. Yeah. That's why there's this strip in the middle to show them what the color palette is. They've already seen it in the mood boards. 
So it, this is kind of like their second version of seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, so usually there aren't too many reservations by this point, mm -hmm. but again, they can always feel free to change their minds. Um, usually I'll provide reasoning as to like, well, I chose this kind of pink because mm -hmm. it's good when you put white on top of it, mm -hmm. but it also works well for a for text color. Like I'll give those reasonings and then we can find the core of why they want that changed. I think this really says to me a lot, first of all, what folks in the chat are saying, which is Signe's organization skills are truly enviable, which <laughs> I have to agree. This is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but you do a lot of communication. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe, you know, clients, they you give them ample time to understand how you are interpreting their vision and mm -hmm. asking them those questions. So as you move forward in the process, there really are not a lot of abrupt changes because you've gone through those yeah. points um, very well and and really um, hammered that idea out before s solidifying things. Exactly. And that's, I mean, there's there'll always be those clients that are a little bit more indecisive that mm -hmm. require a few more edits, but so much of that kind of um, trickiness can be avoided with like a, just a ton of communication. Yeah. Always, like at this point now, I, I definitely have not always been this way. I've mm -hmm. recently become a lot more organized with uh, my communication and mm -hmm. my process. Um, but how do I fill with text there? Um, yeah, now I, I over communicate. I always let them know what the phase, like what phase we're in. Mm -hmm. Saying like, this is the logo concept phase. Yes. This is what we're, I, I'm, looking for this kind of feedback from you. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do next mm -hmm. once this is approved. Yeah. We can't go back. I um, also found it's really easy, like the, the communication is really great when you kind of indicate to them what certain kinds of feedback mean because I didn't even realize going through that process telling a client you can make a minor change right is going to mean something totally different to someone who doesn't design for a living exactly so like understanding the client understanding that process and being really open um, and uh, leaving a great point of communication at that time I think is really right. going to work wonders and um yeah, what I also really love to do with my process now is I'll record Loom videos. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just this little guy right up here. Mm -hmm. um, but it will, um, you can just like screen record, yeah. use your audio, you can be on camera or not. Mm -hmm. And I love it when I can give feedback to my designers because it's just sometimes it's easier for everybody if you can just talk through something rather yes. than just typing something out where it could be misconstrued maybe. Absolutely. Um, to, to hear a client's thoughts and hear how they're trying to express it. Yeah. And that rather than what they settle on in text because right. they are, you know, not exactly sure how to say it. Right. Um, well, and recently I've started to try to encourage some of my clients to send me Loom videos as well. Yes. Um, just yeah. so that like I can hear, so that we don't have the need for as many calls. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes like a call that's five minutes was like, well, you could have just recorded a five minute loom mm -hmm. and then my schedule would be a little bit more free. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of interesting ways to engage with a client in that aspect. I once had a client where we couldn't really settle on things like verbally or visually to yeah. really get his point across. So I said, send me some music and he made me a Spotify playlist and I, I realized what it was he was trying to do. Wow. I was like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. like holy cow, that that's communication a... could be anything. You right. know, that's a super unique approach. Yeah, <laughs> just give me a song that feels gritty, like what you want. Okay, because yeah. I don't get it. Right. <laughs> Um, and just a quick reminder, we've got, you know, maybe about five minutes, five, six minutes left here um, with Sydney. So if you have any last minute questions, let us know in the chat. I see some coming through, which I'm going to read real quick. But um, if we run out of time and can't get to everybody's questions, uh, about four minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they can reach out to you on social media and yes. stuff like that. Definitely um, hit you up after the stream. Um, so we've got some questions like coming in from um, talking about uh, are there some key things that you have noticed that you've changed in your communication, like specifics mm -hmm. of like what is like a I definitely don't do this anymore right. when it comes to that process. Well, I can definitely dive into that, um, especially like if you have questions for me personally, mm -hmm. I'm always happy to chat like mm -hmm. we, on over Instagram or like I'll make. Sometimes I just send people Loom videos when they ask me questions. That's like, perfect. I don't want to text. I'll just send That's you a video. Perfect, perfect, perfect. But um, I wanted to Jump hop into, into express, express really quick here before we leave. Mm -hmm. um, so what I've been trying to do a lot with clients recently is encourage them to use Express kind of mm -hmm. as their way to keep all their files mm -hmm. so they can create those social media templates. So this is kind of just an example of 
like what a brand board would look like for Impasta if they yes. were real. Um, so I would add all their logos in here. Mm -hmm. I've uploaded all the fonts, which these aren't Adobe fonts, mm -hmm. but they, like I purchased them. Um, even though that says trial, I did purchase it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, added those in here. Mm -hmm. And then for templates, like I want to create a like a story template that I had created earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an Illustrator file that I'm just going to pop into just, Express, yeah. which is so nice because I love Illustrator because there's just a bunch of stuff everywhere that I can always grab and drop. Absolutely. Clients don't always love that, so mm -hmm. this way it's nice and clean for them and it's an easy transition. Yeah. So open that there. Sometimes you might need to adjust just a little bit, like move things around, but mm -hmm. again, that's on us as, as, as designers to move those things. Yeah, but I mean, this is a really great way. First of all, it's so quick and Ooh. easy just to jump in. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, but so easy just to jump in um, and use the files you were just working with in Illustrator yeah. and then have access to all of the cool capabilities in Express. Um, so I'm loving that. Yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, no, so normally I would have created like probably a whole grid of social media graphics, kind of like you were seeing with those other clients. Yeah. Um, I would do like maybe an example of what a newsletter might look like, mm -hmm. an example of just like the above the fold and right below on mm -hmm. their website, just so that like sometimes they don't always hire me to do their website. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to just the nudge them in the right direction mm -hmm. or encourage them like, look how great the example is. Let's just hire her for the website. Yeah, just let me do yeah, it, just guys. Let me do it. I'll do it. Right. <laughs> um, and then more social media graphics. Um, and then a lot of my clients now are signing on for brand strategy, so mm -hmm. we'll include. Um, just these very extensive um, brand sets of brand guidelines where it includes all of our brand strategy. Love it. Whole bunch of stuff. Oh, that's beautiful. And then um, brand voice and then the visual brand as well, which mm -hmm. has all the do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. um, how to use this once we leave or how to use this going forward when, you know, if you're not going to be there to kind of you know, work it out, you know, exactly. this is how you would put it together. I love yeah. that. Um, but yeah, we are coming to a close um, here for our live stream. So we do have to take off. Thank you all so much for joining us. Stay tuned because we have more in the First Take series coming up uh, today, tomorrow. Um, definitely give Sydney a follow on social media. Hit her up with any questions you may have after the stream. And that is all the time we've got for yeah. today. Thanks so much, Sydney. Yeah, thank you. This was so much fun. Yeah. Now I get to chill at the conference. Yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya.